In this episode, I'm gonna cover putting a navigation drawer on the left or the right. I'll start off by creating a drawer that I can use on every page of my application, and then I'll put the drawer on the left, and then I'll show how to switch it to the right, and then I'll show how to programmatically open the drawer for the right or the left. So to get started, I'm gonna to go to Android Studio, and I've created a basic project to get going, and I added some scaffolding to get, get set up. And my scaffold here has an app bar and a list view for the body. And in that list view, it says body and a button to open up the drawer. And I'll show how to open up the drawer in a moment. So the next thing I wanna do is construct a stateful widget which has my drawer. And this is gonna just wrap my drawer so I can use it on every page. So to get going, I'm gonna use a live template from IntelliJ IDEA or Android Studio in this case. And I'm gonna start by typing in STFUL, and that brings up the auto, uh, auto assist list for the live template, and I'm gonna double click on Stateful. You can hit enter, and it fills out the boilerplate, and it's waiting for a name, and I'm going to name it App Drawer. Something simple for this tutorial or this video. So the next thing I want to do is replace the container because that's the basic widget that it sets up for the App Drawer state, and in this case, I'm gonna go new drawer. I'm just gonna build a drawer. And this drawer, I'm gonna add a child. The child is gonna be a list view, so I go new list view. And what I wanna do for the list view is add some children. So I'm gonna start by typing in children, children, and it auto-completes with an array of uh, type of widgets. So in this list of widgets, I'm gonna add a new list tile. And this list tile, I'll add for the title, I'll add new text, and I'll just generically put in something item one. And what will I do? Oh, for the top, let's say I want something at the drawer header of the top. Uh, or basically it is called the drawer header, so I'm gonna go new drawer header. And I'm not gonna cover the the functionality of the drawer header. There's actually another option with the login or, or user drawer user header, I think it was called. So I'm gonna go new text and I'll just say header for the header item and one item. So now that I have an app drawer, I'm gonna save it. And now I wanna go up and I wanna add the app drawer to my scaffold. So at the top here, I'm just gonna go drawer this is going to be the left drawer, autocomplete, and I'm gonna construct it, new app drawer. Okay, autocomplete there with an enter, and now I should say, when I save it, it's gonna hot reload, the same as a lightning button up here, or, and it's saved, and I have a drawer on the left. Let's just click on the hamburger icon, and there's my drawer header and item one. Well, that's cool, let's switch it to the right side. This is even easier to do. So I'm gonna type in end drawer for the right side and I'm gonna hit hot reload. And there it is, it's on the right side, pretty cool. So now that I have it on the right side, I want to open it up. Um, how do I do that? How would I open up the drawer? Do I need to get a reference to the drawer itself? And I don't have to get a reference. Um, that would actually noodle my code. So what I wanna do is they have a better way of doing this. So what the scaffold has is a key that I can use to get, at, get the reference of the drawer and open it. So let's see how I would construct that. So I'm gonna go and define a key for it. So I'm gonna add the key argument or key property for the scaffold. And I'm gonna go underscore scaffold key. And what I wanna do is copy this, and I'm gonna create this variable, var. I'm gonna define it at the top up here as an internal state variable equals new global key. And I'm gonna give it the type I'm gonna work with, and that's scaffold state. And you're probably wondering, how did I get this, this generic type for the global key? Well, let's just look at what scaffold is. I'm gonna command click on scaffold, and I'm looking for the state generic, so I'm gonna scroll down and look for it. Sometimes it, you gotta do a little hunting, and so I'm gonna look for the scaffold state. There it is. 
And so that's how I find the, the global key that I'm going to use to reference it. So that just gives me the, the arguments or, or the methods I could access in that state for that state. So the scaffold key, what am I going to do with that? So I'm going to access it on press. So let's say when I tap on drawer, I'm going to go and let's just remove the to do there. And I'm going to go scaffold. I'm going to reference the key. Now that's basically getting me the reference of this widget per se. So I'm going to go to the key underscore current state. I want the current state of how it looks. And what I want to do is basically, oh, there it pops right up as the first option, open drawer. And if I save it, command save is the same as pressing on the hot reload. And now I can press on open drawer. What happens is, whoa, it doesn't work. Why isn't it working? Well, the open drawer is for the left side and open in drawer is for the right side. So keep that in mind. So you could per se have two drawers, I guess. I haven't tried it yet, but um, that would be the, the solution there. So let's look at hot reload and open drawer. And there it goes. It works perfectly. So what if I wanted to just switch sides again? I'm going to switch sides from in drawer to drawer for the left side and hot reload it. And there it is on the left side instantly. That is so fast. That is one of the coolest things about Flutter is how fast the hot reload actually loads and renders the application once you change something. So that is pretty cool. So now I can open the drawer on the left and right side. So let me just review real quickly because I've covered all the cool pieces of having a left drawer, a right drawer, and encapsulated it in my own widget, which I could reuse. So I could put all my drawer logic in this, in this uh, app drawer here. So let me review real quick. So I have a material application which has a home page, and this home page basically instantiates my app drawer. Now, for every page that I have, I can simply define app drawer, and the context is passed to it. Well, I get a reference to the scaffolding just real quick here. The scaffolding is a global key. I found the global key scaffold state did to just review how I found the scaffold state as I went into the stateful widget and I found the counterpart to it, the state, the state by just scrolling down and look, looking for the state. And I found it right here, scaffold state. So what I did is I took that back and I fulfilled the generic. So that way I can understand which methods I have access to. Now with type inference and the Dart language in the IDE may give that to you, but I haven't tried that. But I just wanna show you that and the verbosity of how I found that so I could define it so I can see it and makes it, I think it makes it a little bit more readable. So in this case, it'll give you the tools that you can find that, that global key and the state generic that would go with it. Okay, so then in, in on pressed, on pressed, I take the scaffold key, I get the current state, which shows me that I'm just gonna say the current state is what I see and where it's at in this period of time, and then I open the drawer. Well, down with the app drawer is a stateful widget, and it returns a drawer, another stateful widget. Now, if I command click on the drawer, you can do all kinds of things, and you can read the docs, and I won't cover all the cool features that you can do in drawer. But, oh, it's a stateless widget, so, just keep that in mind. It's it, it doesn't have any bearing on that, but I'm creating a stateful widget because I may want to change the drawer items um, depending on my application state. So that's why I encapsulated it in a stateful widget here. You don't have to build it this way. You can build it however you want, but this is just providing some options of how you could use it within your application. Thanks for watching and follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter, and I'll catch you later.